Ron here with the Smart Wood Shop at the 2019 AWFS Woodworker Extravaganza. And we are going to take a look at Shaper. I've known a lot about this. I've actually saw them build my workbench with this. So it's excellent to uh, see it firsthand. All right, let's have it. All right, cool. So I'll give you kind of a little quick rundown. So there's a camera inside this unit here. Uh, it actually looks at, out in the front of the unit and it, it reads a tape. So the tape gives the unit location information. So there's a computer inside, it crunches all these numbers as fast as it can to get the location. So as I move the unit, you can actually see what's below the bit here. So it's constantly tracking my thing. If I can't see tape, the unit will not respond. So it's very important to make sure that you set it up in a way that you, know, you can always see tape. Now, the second part of this is that while you're cutting, the spindle is actually correcting your mistakes. So as fast as it can, we're finding the information of where the unit is, and then we're also correcting for your mistakes. So for instance, if I build a quick file here on tool, such as this, what I need to do when I'm cutting this is, is move to the left and right. But if I move up and down, the spindle will actually do correction here. So if I move down, the spindle will move up to try to stick to that line. So as long as we're about a half inch, it'll so you got about a half inch of, of play. play. So, so, so you could be a half inch off. Exactly. Basically. If you're a half inch off, we'll still put, get you on the line. Okay. Yeah. So now, uh, why don't we just throw a file in there from the computer so we have a digital like backbone of the system that actually can load files that you store online, similar okay. to Dropbox or other file so, services. So if you've got something repetitive you do all the time, yeah. then uh, you can. Yeah, so like you can upload it to your account, and then it'll always be there. Uh, okay. We also have services that allow you to, you know, sync files to the tool directly uh, okay. with one click. So you see a file you need, click a button, it'll get synced here. Okay. Um, we also have USB, so if you're in a shop or you don't have Wi-Fi available, you can just pop it on a USB and plug it in as well. So what kind of files are this? What can I design on and put in here? Sure. So we actually are software agnostic. Uh, we use SVG files, which are pretty standard open files format for vector files. Okay. Um, so pretty much any software you like that does vector systems. So, so it, it, I could do SketchUp, but I just have to output it. To, exactly. Okay. And, and, uh, there's a couple like exporters and kind of things that will help that, okay. that export process from SketchUp. But because you know the Park Workbench is all in SketchUp. Exactly. So I got it. Okay. And, well, and we have a. I think there's actually two uh, SketchUp exporters right now that okay. some people in the community have built. So you can just select your face and click export and it'll send a file what? ready for the machine. Perfect. Uh, we also have like Fusion 360, we have an exporter that we actually worked with. Uh, to, so you can like select sketches or faces or objects and it'll okay. smartly give all the color coding. So the color coding is actually how you tell it like, I want to cut the inside of the shape or the outside, okay. or I want to pocket the whole area out. Uh, but you can also do that on tools. So there's this, okay. this mix of if you're looking for really complex stuff, you want to use a software that's like 2D or 3D and okay. export to the tool. But simpler stuff like holes, circles, slots, you can just do it all on tool. Okay. So so I'll just select this uh, this plum hinge. So this is a file that we have, and uh, it actually fits this here. Okay. So we actually need to make a three cuts: one for the big spot, and then two for the small guys. Okay. So. When we, when we hit this, I'm actually gonna turn the grid on so that it's snapping and it's actually gonna be right in line with its edge here. So the file's already baked in to the right uh, distance from the edge, so I just need to take the anchor and move it south to the bottom. And now I know that the bottom of this file is actually gonna get placed at zero, zero. Okay. And so if we look, if we wanted this, say, uh, you know, let's say 10 inches on center from the edge of this side, We've already created a grid by touching here, here, and here, and builds out a, a numerical grid so I can place things in a very accurate location. Okay. So I'll go ahead and place it. Now that file's baked into this area, and now we just need to cut. So go to cut mode. I need to do a couple things. One, I need to pocket out this area, and then two, I'll show you, is a cool little software feature that we added not too long ago, which is called Helix, and then I'll actually drill any hole that will fit within our half-inch corrective range to any depth in one click. Okay. So, We'll start with that, and I will turn Helix on, and I will set it to 0.5 inches. So I'll just turn this on, hit the back end, hit one button, and you'll see All right. going down in one click. That all's done. Come over here, do the same thing. Okay, so now we have our 
two holes. Okay. Now I'll go back to this, and I'm actually going to change this from a inside shot to a pocket. Uh, and I'm just going to hog out this entire area. Okay. So. Perfect. Yeah. This being a, a smart router or a handheld CNC. Yes. Um, uh, so you're doing it with your hands. Right, right. So I've got my workbench and I'm going to be cutting it out of a 4x8 sheet of plywood. Sure. I set that whole file up for the top yep. and yeah. just follow this screen and everything I need that's programmed into that will be cut. Correct. Yeah, so you're. You know, you're, 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 you'll make a grid, you'll have your kind of bounding box that matches the top, and then you place it from a corner, and then everything will just be placed in the right spots, and you'll just move around cutting your holes. So, like if you're building your type of smart bench. You, right. Uh, so so I want to do my 20 millimeter cuts. Actually, yeah. It'll just... So what's cool about that is now that we have this helix functionality is, and I'll show you, if I to design a 20 millimeter hole, this would assumingly be like encoded in the files, but we Build one right now. Uh, so this is our 20 millimeter hole. If you look, it's a little too big to cut with a uh, quarter inch bit because right. you don't have the corrective range. If you have a half inch bit, uh, you can just tell the software, okay, my bit's 0.5 inches. Now uh, it has a smart system in, so you Z touch, and that lowers this bit until it touches. We have a sensor in here that detects it over the top. So now whatever distance I put here, it will cut to that depth. So. Because now I have a bigger bit, it's actually adjusting the, the cut pass. So I can cut your 20 millimeter holes in one click to whatever depth I need. The tape you have is for this camera to read it, know where it is, so it knows where it's at. Right. How do I decide where to put this stuff? Yeah, so it really depends on what you're doing. If you're doing small stuff, in general, the camera looks up over front. So you're just putting, you just need it in front. So for instance, we don't have it here because we're actually just replacing this while we do the cuts and demo. But if you're doing something bigger, you'll actually need to take it up now. So you don't really need to take right under what you're cutting, but you do need it in front of the camera. So I can't actually cut while I'm looking this way because no tape can be seen. So it's not actually updating the screen, and you'll see the tape meter is red because it doesn't okay. know where it is. But as soon as it sees tape, it'll show you exactly how much tape you're, you need to see. So red means you're going to not be able to cut, and you're going to get low accuracy and uh, precision. But as you fill it up, you'll get more. So really, so what do I do if I want to cut right over here? Is it search? Sure. So like in this case, you would face the tape this way. OK. So you just need to be facing the tape in order to see it. So. OK. It's a consumable. Is that a big expense to the? Yeah, so, so we sell these rolls. Uh, one of the rolls is $18, and it covers almost two 4x8 machines of plywood. OK. So, about almost ten dollars for four by eights. Okay. So if you're doing a lot of four by eights, you can, you can get up there. But for instance, like we're reason, we've been reasoning this for the whole show. So we right. haven't, we're not reapplying it every time because we're cutting smaller stuff. Where I see this working in a situation like mine is I'm portable, and I can't here. You know, I just can't use a big four by eight or five by ten. Sure. They're nice. Yeah. If I could figure out a way to drop them on the job and have them work, but right. they're super expensive, yeah. and I have to calibrate and set them up, and I just can't get them to the job. Sure. And so and being mobile is like one of our strong points, right? It's, right. It's the size of a sustainer, and we're in a truck, and can fit wherever. And if you, you know, we're not going to replace a CNC if we're going to help augment. I'm the old school. Make a template, yeah. which is drilling holes, cutting, yeah. sanding, getting the template right. Well, and that takes a long time. Right? Yeah. It's like sometimes getting the template right is five times the it, amount of time it takes to do that. Because if job. I'm going to cut yeah. 10 pieces, I'm going to have 10 wrong cuts because the be template's perfect, not right. right. So, and the bit, you know, follows 
the shape, so it's got to be smooth because otherwise it'll... Correct. And, and one of the things that we see people doing is they're kind of digitizing their templates, right? So they're, instead of having this template sitting around your shop for years and maybe you use it, maybe you don't, you actually digitize the template in the software, and now anytime you need it, you have the choice of, I can make another template that will match all the other ones that I've ever made, or right. I can just choose to do it right in the piece. Just right. to, so it, I could actually see that as being a, a hybrid way that I would use it is maybe having the templates, if they're perfect, I can be really quick sure. to drop them. So exactly. I could see taking this to make my templates. Exactly, and we see a lot of people are doing that because it, yes. it's, it's the templates just take a really long time. And if, if you already have a digital fingerprint of the template, like just cutting another one is easy now because right. as long as you're within half an inch, we're correcting you. And it'll, right. be, it'll match all the other ones. So. Yeah, and then going into curves and straights, you get that oh, nice exactly. line and you're not trying to line them up and sand them and all of that kind of stuff. So, any, what's the future for this? Are you guys evolving more, or is this pretty much where it is? Yeah, so what's cool about this is, you know, we're connected to the internet, and we have a software team at work who's actually making the software better. So we're actually working on getting performance better, making the features better. Uh, all this stuff is actually released, we release new software every three to four months or so. Okay. So for, for instance, that Helix thing that we showed you earlier where it just cuts a single hole to any depth in one click was a software update that we applied. Okay. So if you're connected to the, the uh, internet, it will download it and prompt you like, hey, do you want to install this new software? Here are the features, here's what you're going to get. And we can fix bugs, we can make things faster. Uh, you know, one of the big things we did recently was we increased the retraction rate when you go outside of a line by quite a bit. So almost more than double. So when you go out of out of the thing, it actually retracts to keep you from messing up things, but it used to be a lot slower. And through software, we can make that faster. So that was all software firmware. It's all firmware making the hardware better. So we have we have a team of engineers working on that, and the updates for that are free. So, so if I buy the machine, yeah. For life, I get firmware updates. Correct. So there's no subscription model. Yeah, no subscription for the operating system. This tool is a lot smarter now than it was when we originally released two years ago. It'll continue to get better. Kind of like Tesla. You come out it's and your car's all new. Kind of like Tesla. Wake up like in the whatever, morning and you know, it's it's you know four percent faster than it was last night. Two technical questions. Sure. How much does it weigh? Yeah, 16. I think it's close yeah, to like yeah. right But under. that weight is good because that gives you, keeps yeah. vibration. Oh, and and the, the cool thing actually is the, the weight is predominantly in the in the rear core, the tower okay. machine. So what's neat about it is that you can actually overhang beyond uh, beyond the cut range of the machine. So if you're okay. working out on the edge, say on a door, or uh, if you're pocketing a large pocket, it's not going to hinder you. Uh, you know, normally it's, it's actually a little bit difficult if you've got a router, you're kind of rocking on the edge, you've got to keep pressure applied on the surface. Right. It's really nice that the weight is, is loaded in the back to keep you balanced. What does it cost to get started with this? Uh, yes, so yeah. it's 2,500 bucks. 2,500, uh, what yep. does that get you? That gets you the, the base, the spindle. Uh, it gets you a few starting cutters to get started, as well as the, uh, the two rolls of tape. And the box? And the box, yeah. So. Okay. You get, a, you get a hose too? Yeah, the that yeah, comes with it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's more so a, you're set up yeah. to go then. Yeah, more of an adapter. So we really just want you to use vacuum, whether you're using uh, you know, a, a European setup, the 35 millimeter, or um, a one and a half inch shop vac standard. That's what this adapter is, is, is primarily for. So for about 2,500, then you take care of us and help us figure out how to start using it and learn yeah, it and as we well? Yeah, and tutorials online. And Walk you through the basics of designing software for the files, and yeah. walk you through using it. So we have a lot of yeah. resources. We're, we're on hand to answer questions. And so, phone and email, text. Email, email primarily. Okay. Uh, to get, uh, to get like first, first come, uh, rather to get first priority and phone support, we have a pro package, and that actually offers a couple things. The first and coolest thing that it, that it offers for, for people who are working and relying on the machine is a rapid replacement. So basically, you have any issues with your machine, whether you cause them, it's our fault, whatever. We don't ask questions. Okay. Uh, you get a, a drop ship return uh, fast shipped out to you. So you know, say you have a problem uh, Monday morning, you're going to have a machine in hand sometime Tuesday. So we get to keep working. Right. So uh, and, and that also has that additional like 
priority phone support. We're a small company still, and growing our team, especially on the on the support side, is difficult. If you know you got lots of people calling in, right. so we just want to be able to, to make sure that the customers that really need immediate support, pros whose you know bottom line counts on it, get that first. Uh, so that's uh, what's the, the pro is six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars. It's also yeah. one time or one and time. One, one time. time. And it gives you an extra year more to on the hardware. That's okay. True. So it's kind of like I like to think of it as is six hundred dollars for another machine on your shelf in spare all the time. Okay. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a reasonable uh, expense. Yeah. If we're out for, working. Absolutely. Yeah. Zero. It's really it's really designed for folks who are who are out and working with the machine every day. I think you guys are leading us woodworkers into the future, but letting us keep putting a little sawdust in our hair and in our eyes. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate the yeah. time. Cheers. Thank you. Sorry to dive in, Sean. Oh, no problem. <laughs> All righty, guys. Have a great day. All right. Thanks, Ron.